Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda Ellis. I do hope that you're well. Today is the 2nd of December 2023. And in fact, over the course of the next 48 hours or so, I'm going to put out two videos. So I'm just telling you because to look out for them, because maybe one won't show just because of the way the algorithms are at the moment. But there's this one that you're going to be watching, hopefully, and another one that I'm going to be putting out, which is the first in a series of four, which celebrate and honour the energy of Advent in the lead up to Christmas. Um, in particular, we're going to be looking at the four um, Advent Sundays uh, and the themes of them. And they are centered around the energies of hope, peace, joy and love. So I'm going to do a video dedicated to each one of those qualities and energies. I was going to do it today, to be honest, but I've ordered an Advent candle with four, with those four candles and it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, I might have to do it on Monday. If I'm a little bit late with the first one, please excuse me. Um, but that will be coming forward as well. Also in December, going to be doing a video on ancestral healing. That's going to be tied in around the winter solstice date, which is the 21st of December. And I also plan to do another channeling with Marilyn Monroe. Uh, the first one that I released last week has gone down exceptionally well. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I thought it'd be great to bring Marilyn back around Christmas time as a little gift underneath the tree for all of us. So from the Queen of Hollywood, when in this video, we're going to be talking to a future queen. And this is going to be centred on the energy of Catherine, Princess of Wales, also known as Kate Middleton, because that was her birth name. But her official title, yes, is Catherine, Princess of Wales. Um, and where to start with this, really? I think the first thing to say is that this video... Um, I walked away from six weeks ago and decided to not do... I did that also because I tuned into the energy of Princess Diana at that time and Diana was saying no, she was putting a stop to it. So I completely respected that, I walked away from it. Within, well, within the last few days, um, I've had the green light from Diana to come on and say what I'm going to say in this video. And also she made me understand that the initial no that she gave was because some of the subject matter that we're going to be discussing is a wound that she also carried in her life. And just because somebody has passed a spirit doesn't mean that everything magically just disappears from a particular lifetime in terms of pain and suffering. To a large degree, it does. And there is healing, of course, that happens in the spirit world. But put it this way, we come back and we reincarnate because of uh, things that have been left undone, things that haven't been finished, loose ends basically, or things that we feel as though we didn't properly maybe master or get on top of. That's why we come back. And one of the uh, one of the wounds with Diana was, of course, linked into weight, body image, um, eating disorder, and. That was and still is a sensitive subject. Now, this video aims to be a healing portal and I'm setting up the parameters of that now and the boundaries that it is a healing video. It's a healing portal. Anybody that suffers with um, body image, uh, eating issues, this video is intended to bring through some healing for you because many of these um, disorders are secret by nature. I remember channeling Karen Carpenter, and I will put the link below that to this video um, for you to look at if you didn't ever get to see that one. And of course, Karen talked about her battle with um, eating, eating disorders. Anyhow, so yes, this is a sensitive subject. This is uh, also about a much loved person. I have to say, I really love Kate. I think she's great. I also really love Diana. I think she's great. Um, but why now the green light? 
to come on and say that actually Kate appears to be struggling, whether it is through disordered eating, let's call it that, whether it is through stress and burnout, which is resulting in significant weight loss and her not looking particularly well, um, remains to be seen. But the end result is the same. It's a weakened physical frame, although she remains very beautiful. And of course, she's come in with a very big soul contract to fulfill. And she will fulfill it in terms of being a future queen. Um, but she definitely needs our help, our love, our healing energy sent to her. Because what was very clearly shown to me this week, and I'm sure some of you agree, is that there's a very strong energy of psychic attack and those are words that I don't bandy around uh, very frequently, but I do believe it to be true. Psychic attack um, aimed particularly at Kate. And at the end of the day, if you take away the royal titles and all of that, she's just a human being. She's a mother to three people. But as I say, she's also got this huge soul contract to come in and be queen and partner to a future king. Um, that is a big, heavy task and it will take its toll on anybody. So we're going to send her some healing and some light for whatever is going on around her. Uh, but why the green light basically this week is because of the book that's been released by, um, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, Omid Scoby, I think is how you pronounce it. Somebody who's been on the periphery of gossip, um, slander, I would say, news, uh, leaks from particular camps for a number of years now. But it's resulted in this book that has just been released called End Game. It's quite interesting, actually, just the title of the book alone gives away maybe the purpose of it, um, that we are in end game times now in terms of this attack energy, which aims to take down that which is deemed a threat or disliked for whatever reason. Um, so in the book, no, I haven't read it yet. I don't actually think it's been released yet in the UK. Um, but the contro controversy this week is there've been leaks from it, or it's been released, I think, in Holland. Uh, and within that Dutch version of the book, uh, the names of Catherine and also King Charles were outed as supposedly the racists that questioned what colour uh, Meghan and Harry's baby would be when it was born. This, of course, is all hearsay. None of us were ever in the room when supposedly these things were said or not said. Um, if they were said, for what agenda are they now being repeated now? Are they true? Are they false? Uh, within the book as well, there are um, there's basically what I'm hearing from Spirit is character assassination, particularly of Kate linked into her being dull, uh, cardboard cutout, cold, lazy, you know, it goes on. I don't, I'm not going to go into all of it. It's all available on Google if you really want to look. Most of you probably that have tuned into this video know anyway uh, the contents of the book. Scobie has been doing the rounds this week, giving his interviews, saying that he is aghast at the names being leaked. They were never meant to be in the book. So somehow they got into the book. How did they arrive there? Um, he sort of threw the publisher or the translator under the bus and said it must have been her fault. Um, of course, she's come out and said, well, it wasn't me. I did didn't create names that went into a, uh, a book. Um, so, you know, we can hazard a guess in terms of where the names came from and for what reason. But the end result is there's a human being in the line of fire. And this feels like a very orchestrated psychic attack. So what this does to a human being is it weakens them. And Ultimately, this figure in Catherine is somebody that is important, is here to play a pivotal role um, over the next couple of decades, already has done, and deserves an opportunity maybe for healing to be directed to her. So I did a video, which I didn't put up on Instagram yesterday, 
I was a little bit tired. I was sort of playing with cards a bit. Uh, I often do that when I'm just sitting here on my own at the end of the day, um, just pull some cards on different subjects. I don't always put them up. Um, I very rarely actually put them up. It's more just for my own information or curiosity. But I was pulling some cards on Omid Scoop, Scoby. I keep wanting to call him Scooby. Um, I'm not meaning to be offensive by that either. It's just, it feels like quite an interesting analogy because if you grew up in the UK, I don't know if this travelled overseas, but one of my favourite cartoons as a kid was Scooby-Doo. And at the end of Scooby-Doo, of course, they always take the mask off and they reveal who the baddie is or who the... Um, yeah, who, who the baddie is, you know, putting it in very simple, ch childish terms. It's a ch children's cartoon at the end of the day, but they always take off the mask. It's like, oh my God, it's the candlestick maker or the bookmaker or whatever. Um, he has that sort of energy about him as well, but, and it is, does feel like, uh, again, a very orchestrated soap opera as well. As I say, I'm not really into all of the gossip side of it. Uh, it's more the healing aspect of it that interests me and whether we can use what's coming up now and what is pretty much in front of our faces in terms of how Kate is looking, albeit still beautiful, to, as I say, send her good vibes, but also raise the awareness of what psychic attack energy can do, um, what uh, stress and pressure can do, and also how sometimes what the, the whole energy of um, it interfering with your eating pattern, whether that's a full scale disorder or whether that's just put it this way, people fall into two camps. Sometimes when you're very, very stressed and maybe even burnt out, you can overeat. You can be stuffing your face with cake, chocolate, whatever. It's a coping mechanism. I think most people recognize that to be true. But there's also another camp who can be um, find it very hard to eat when they're very stressed and anxious or um, burnt out. And I feel as though she falls into that camp. So whether it's strayed into something similar to what Princess Diana had, which was full-blown eating disorder or not, as I say, there definitely is an energy around her at the moment where she's very vulnerable and weakened. So we're going to be addressing that. I think before, though, we start properly, I would like to go back a number of years and I'd like to go back to just before William and Kate got married. And I'm really glad that I managed to, that I had kept this. One good thing about Facebook is that it keeps everything that you've ever written or said. Um, so always make sure that you're writing and good stuff, hopefully, and not poisonous articles. But one of the things that I wrote around the time that they got married was a piece on their numerology. And I'm going to just read you a very paraphrased um, part of the article that went up on a, uh, a website that I had around that time. Um, but I always remember writing it. And of course, it was very much in the time that everybody was, of course, excited about the wedding, wishing the best for them, which, of course, is what I also wished as well. But they have a lot of what is called master number energy around them, both of them, and the marriage date as well. And I remember saying, mm, it looks like there's going to be challenges here in this relationship. It can't not be because it's actually a relationship linked into mastery. The soul contract is linked into mastery. Mastery doesn't come without significant hurdles, challenges and obstacles. And I always remember one of you in particular saying, gosh, I always remember you talking about that, uh, that, that 11 energy around them. And, uh, you know, you were worried about them, weren't you? And at the time I remember thinking, yeah, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe because it, it was all looking so rosy. But of course, roll forward a number of years and there have been significant uh, challenges that they've faced. So this is the bit that I'd just like to reread out to you, if I may. Uh, here we go. Uh, and obviously it ties into William as well. Um, I feel as though they're a very tight couple. And I know there are um, people out there who gossip and speculate on their marriage and whether he's been unfaithful or not. I don't personally pick up that he has. I might pull some cards on that, but I don't p pick up that he has. Um, but equally, all marriages have periods of difficulty. So um, that, that may, you know... 
that that's the truth as well. Um, what was I going to say? I got distracted there. Um, yeah, but I've never seen them s separating. I've never seen that happening. I feel as though they'll always stay together through thick or thin. Um, okay, here we go. So it says, in both her sons, I'm talking about Diana, her legacy to live on, uh, uh, oh no, sorry. Out of curiosity, I'll just go to the main bit. Out of curiosity, I started to look into the numerology of the forthcoming wedding of William to Kate Middleton. Um, above all else, William has so much significant symbolism around him on the day that he was born, as well as the day that he marries, that it suggests he is destined to carry a beacon of hope. He was born on a solar eclipse just after a summer solstice and his planets of relationships, global and personal, are in the emotional sign of cancer, governed by feelings, nurturing and caring. Kate's actual birth time is unknown. I mean, maybe it is now, but I wrote this years ago. Um, but she was certainly born around the time of a lunar moon eclipse. So we have the future king born under the sun, male energy, and the future queen born under the power of the moon, governing feminine energy. However, the potential beacon of hope that they both carry is not without risk, controversy, or any done deal of guaranteed success. And he and they as a couple will need positivity and good wishes to keep that flame alive and bright. The 29th, the day in which they married, uh, which is also the same day as Charles and Diana, although different month and obviously different year, is also um, interesting because Prince William was also born on the 29th. In fact, in, sorry, no, he, he wasn't born on the 29th. His numerology based on his birth date makes him a 2911 energy. Um, and these are individuals who have exceptional potential. So he's a life path number 11. He's here to be what um, is called the Olympic spiritual athlete, which means you have to jump through a number of different hoops to get to where, you know, you're, you're meant to be in the end. And then I end this piece by saying, back to William and Kate, they have number 11 energy around them in William's destiny, yet their marriage date looks much more promising than it did for Charles and Diana. William is also blessed to have Kate, her birth date adds to three, and the vibration of the planet Jupiter, which is known as the lucky planet, bestowing good fortune, abundance and joy. Kate was also born on the 9th, which links to Mars, um, and the energy of Mars is punchy, forceful and dynamic, a wallflower she isn't. And interesting because sort of the book is implying that's exactly what she is. Um, and then I end by saying they're going to have challenges. Of that, there is no doubt. They may come sooner than they realise, but they still feel to me like two bright beacons of light in a world that desperately needs all the good guys it can get. I, for one, wish them spiritual protection, light, and all the very best for a bright, inspiring future. So that was what I wrote, as I say, uh, however long ago it was that they got married. And... Um, I feel this is the moment that I'm meant to return and just bring that spiritual protection back into the fore for this couple. So, um, yeah, I was saying about the video that I did yesterday on Instagram, which didn't post <laughs> when I was just playing with my cards in the, in the evening. I did show you this one card that came up uh, quite clearly for Omid Scobie. And... I don't know why my I don't know why my uh, camera is not being able to focus at the moment. Apologies, but anyway, I haven't really got time to sort it out today. I've got to put the Christmas tree out, out out of this, and then I've got fourteen coming for dinner in a week's time. So I've got a lot to do today. So this this video just needs to go out there. It's basically the Four of Pentacles, though, and it shows this figure who looks very much like Omid himself, sitting there with a pile of money, sort of with the Grim Reaper energy behind him, and. More than anything, it's the energy of if you make money off other people's unhappiness, it doesn't tend to make you happy. So the question is, uh, who is he 
earning that money for? Is it purely for himself? For what purpose, etc.? Um, I also said that poison scent affects the one who sends it. And this is very true of psychic attack as well. Uh, whether it's conscious or subconscious, if we send negative feelings and thoughts, and then worse, we act on them, um, particularly out of spite or revenge, then the poison comes back to us eventually. It taints the one who sends it as well. So, um, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Let's just dive straight in to the main subject, which is uh, Kate potentially being uh, a little bit unwell at the moment. I'm not going to put the photographs up, but there are photographs of her recently. In fact, there is one I will show, uh, which was from less than 24 hours ago. Uh, it's the one where, on the date where she's basically been accused of being this racist, which I don't believe she is, um, her and William had to turn up to a function in London. Um, so that's what she looked like, okay. Very, very thin, very painfully thin. And I've noticed the last couple of times she's been in public, she's been wearing these dresses with very pronounced shoulders, which of course make you look bigger than you actually are. And also um, like a cape effect. So there was one where she was wearing uh, a beautiful red dress. I mean, she looked lovely, but very voluminous. Voluminous, is that the right word? A lot of material. Um, and this is the same thing. It's got these sort of winged, caped things on the arms. Um, I think she looks very underweight in that photograph. And I think the clothes are disguising the extent of the weight loss. So... As I say, whether that weight loss is a result of um, an actual disorder, a full-blown disorder, or whether it is the result of stress, burnout, worry, um, overwork, etc., the end result is the same. I will say that going back six weeks or so, when I first really had my eyes opened by spirit to the fact there was a problem with her... Um, one thing with her, and there's no easy way to say this, so I'll just spit it out, and you don't have to agree, okay? If you, if you don't agree, it's fine to just switch off, but I feel called to say what I'm meant to say. And also it's because I'm being told if I don't say it in the way that I'm trying to, which is a loving way, someone else is going to say it in a more spiteful way, okay? So just needing to get it out there in the most um, compassionate way possible. But the first time I became very aware that there the probably is an issue, um, Kate has been known to have her fingers uh, plastered for, for a number of years. I believe she used to do it before she even got married to William. Now, it's always been passed off as like a sporting injury or um, it hasn't been passed off as anything. She just, if you look back, there have been a number of times when she's appeared in public with plasters on her fingers. And... Um, the, the last time she did it was the night before Megan was due back in the UK. Now, Megan didn't actually show her face, but there was speculation that she was going to be appearing with Harry for something to do with the Invictus Games. And on the night before that was going to happen, Kate was pictured again with her fingers strapped um, both fingers strapped with plasters. The palace said that it was to do with a trampoline accident, that she'd fallen off a trampoline playing with her children. Um, but for me, that was a, a red flag. Um, if you don't know what I'm referring to here, I will just give it its official uh, name. Uh, let me just pause the camera. Yeah, it's called Russell's sign. Uh, you can look it up. I feel really uncomfortable with this video. I don't actually know if I'm going to be able to put it up or not. Um, I don't know why I'm finding it so difficult to do. I... I'm going to pull a few cards. I'm going to pull a few cards from the after tarot. 
I'm going to ask the cards about Kate's energy at this time. We have the Queen of Wands and the Empress. Yeah. You see, whatever is going on with her, nothing is going to be able to stop her um, fulfilling her divine birthright to be a queen. You see, I keep being shown the energy of Princess Diana because I think why I'm struggling is I think sometimes when we talk about secret battles, and by the way, I don't have this condition, okay, in case some people are thinking it's because I'm hiding this. I'm, I'm not hiding uh, this. Although am I? I mean, maybe looking back on it, I suppose as a child, you see, this is, this is where it goes so deep. It's, it, there are secret battles. I suppose as a little girl, thinking about it, I, I probably would have been classed as having some form of eating disorder. I remember, I'm talking about under the age of 10, going off and not wanting to eat breakfast and stuffing toast up my sleeves. I remember, I remember the feeling of the toast up my sleeve and flushing it down the toilet. And there was a joke that my mum still tells to this day, bless her heart, although it's not really funny, which was as a very young child, the only thing I would eat was be dog biscuits. So I know this is sounding terrible now. It's like, what do you mean you haven't got a problem? I mean, because I don't have it now. I'm not behaving like that now. And I suppose this is the thing, um, that just because I'm highlighting that there might be a potential problem with this lovely lady at the moment, it's not a sign of weakness. It's not a mistake. It's not, it's just part of being human. And being human means that we sometimes suffer and we don't know how to cope with our feelings. And food can be one of those things that we can use uh, against ourselves. So yeah, for whatever reason I was being like that with food as a little girl, I don't know. I Maybe I've blanked it out. I really can't remember. But it was probably linked into control. I'm sure it was. So maybe that's, maybe I just needed to say that and then I can actually get on to actually deliver this video in the best way that I possibly can because I've got extraordinary compassion for Catherine um, if she is suffering from anything like this. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And... To be honest, I hope that I am. But if it's not that and it's just stress, as I say, there's still an issue there. But Diana's giving me the green light for a reason. And let me just tune into Diana's energy right now. She's saying you're doing just fine. Um, she says there's so much shame and um, misunderstanding also with regards to the whole subject of eating disorders and why people display them, why people sink into them, why people lean on, lean into them. And it's always usually at times in their life where they're struggling to a degree with something. And that's going to be different for every person. Um, but it doesn't have to define you. It doesn't have to become something that um, lasts. She's showing me now a picture of Di Diana I'm talking about. She's showing me a picture of herself uh, as she was before she died, actually. And if you remember that picture, the one she's showing me is she's standing on the um, the boat with, with the about to leap into the water. And she's wearing a um, like an animal skin um, leopard print type swimsuit. And she's got a slightly round belly. Um, and she's saying, no, I wasn't pregnant. I was just, I had a fuller figure. And I was comfortable in my body. I was comfortable in my body that was starting to age a little bit, putting on more weight. Um, still, still, um, this is my words now, still lean, but not as lean as she was in her younger years. She had grown into accepting her body more. So she's saying that as she when she died, she had conquered this. She'd conquered this um, issue that she'd had as a younger woman. And we know her story and we know that she suffered from chronic uh, bulimia as a younger woman and a working royal as well. So she did conquer it. It didn't define her. It didn't. Uh, it didn't overtake her uh, forever. 
it was epi episodic is what she's saying, episodic. Um, and I feel as though there's just this great, I'm feeling it in my solar plexus, this great feeling of uh, sadness and concern uh, for Kate at this time, because she's saying there's parallels with when I was shrinking in front of the world's eyes and getting thinner and thinner and wearing more and more pretty dresses and bigger jewels. But she says, you can always see it in the eyes. The, uh, and she said, I, I was getting, th I was getting, I was shrinking into nothing in front of people's eyes. And some people were commenting on it, but many were just choosing to ignore it. Um, and this is just an observation from me tuning into Diana's energy, but also knowing what's going on with Kate at the moment. It's a weird one. You know, we live in times where supposedly there's more awareness and we're in a society where we have social media 24-7 and everyone's got an opinion on everything. But no one seems to be commenting on what's happening with Kate. Diana had more people commenting on her weight loss than Kate has on hers. Why is that? Um, and I, what Diana's showing me here is in many ways... What we're doing here is, is we're taking a sledgehammer to that wall of um, lies because it's not a wall of protection. You're not being protected when people aren't questioning you for a behaviour. Um, and it's not about accusing. It's not about pointing the fingers of accusation. It's about questioning, are you okay? Are, are you okay? Uh, no one's asking that. But I feel as though this week there was a bit of a turning point with this book, with this poisonous book's release. Um, I hear the word assassin with him, actually. Scobie, I'm talking about. Assassin is the word I get when I look at his energy field. And uh, relentless as well. Relentless assassin. And whoever sent that assassin, and for what purpose, as I say, is a video maybe for another day. But at the end of the day I'm just being shown here Kate and it's like she's in the it's like a deer caught in the um uh, headlights but I'm seeing that not, she's not going to be shot or anything like that but it's like it's like she's the target you know the target the cross she's the target and they're going for her because it feels as though she's the most uh sensitive stroke vulnerable um they're going for the easiest prey to pick off this is really vile energy, you know, that I'm tapping into here, directed at her. So, bless her, there's very few people that would be able to uh, stand up against this. But the good news is that she's not alone. And that's the purpose of doing this video, because I know there's enough people that love her. Uh, I put up a bit of an SOS on Facebook and Instagram yesterday, I think it was, and with a bit of a like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to get all the royal haters out in force, you know, because, but should I do it? Should I not? And I was just overwhelmed with the wave of love uh, for her. So that's what we, we want to now make that into a, a cascade. Okay, a cascade of love. Um, okay, so for her, we have the energy of the Queen of Wands and the Empress. So that is her. Um, she's not going to be knocked off her throne. <laughs> Uh, either as the monarch, um, monarch's wife in the future. I suspect they'll be a bit like Charles and Camilla. It will be king and queen. Um, and we've also got the empress, the mother. Okay, so she's both of that. Let's pull some other cards. Let's see how she's doing at this time. Okay. So asking my guides to just be with me as I pull these cards bringing in spiritual protection for reading on this subject also. Thank you. To allow the energy of secrecy to evaporate and for the energy of healing and compassion and strength and health and buoyancy and joy to come in around her and anybody else that's suffering to heal the damaged parts of her, to heal the damaged parts of us, to put down the weapons of attack, 
to not give any more power to those that seek to destroy, to bring in a wave of love. Show me the energy of Kate at this time. We've got the King of Cups. There's Charles. <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, interesting. I said there's Charles. I was wanting to say there's William. But okay, so it is also Charles that's being attacked. And you see, Charles came out and said, my beloved um, daughter-in-law, didn't he? He has Kate's back. So with their, that's Charles. I don't feel that's actually William. William is the King of uh, Wands to me when I usually read. So... We've also got the two of swords on the bottom of the deck, which came out with the king of cups. This is Charles reviewing his options now. And I'm hearing no option is off the table. Um, no option is off the table. And what I mean by that is I don't, I, I basically mean potentially revoking the titles of other people. Um, if proven that they were behind this, that has not been proven yet. So we don't want to start another witch hunt going another way. Remember, negative energy sent to anybody is not good. Uh, energy of forgiveness needs to come in. But I'm just hearing all options are on the table. Two of swords, not quite knowing what where to go with it yet. Um, caught in a battle here between two brothers as well, I'm hearing. Um, this is quite typical as a parent as well, that you can be um, in a battle between your children, um, not knowing what to do, not knowing which side to take, not actually wanting to take a side, because here we've got the person blindfolded, maybe not wanting to see the true extent of the harm of the brother's fight. Whoever started it is immaterial. There is a fight taking place here and the person that's caught in the crosswire and the person who's getting most affected is this lady. Okay. So, okay, we've got the four of wands, which has just leapt out of the deck. That's my uh, twin flame card in this deck. That's what I call my twin flame card. Soulmate, if you want, you want to use that term instead. That to me is William and Kate. in their carriage. It's interesting because if you watch a coronation or a state funeral or anything here in the UK, we've got these extraordinarily beautiful golden carriages from days of old, but they're still all wheeled out. But this couple are in a, um, a carriage made of wood. And that feels symbolic of the fact that when William and Kate become king and queen, it will be a scaled down monarchy. Charles will start the process. I've said this before. It'll be a scaled down monarchy. It will be a, it'll be more humble in nature. It'll be more um, in tune with the people and it's going to look very different. But yeah, that's definitely them. Okay. Can you show me if uh, Kate's physical state at this time, please? Okay, we've got the two of um, pentacles has just um, come out of the deck. This says to me that she um, is interesting. Diana's word to describe eating issues was episodic, episodic which is that it comes and it goes, okay? There are times that she's okay, there are times that she's not okay. Um, it's triggered by certain things and it's triggered particularly by this energy and this energy, which is on the bottom of the deck, which is um, somebody wanting to win at all costs, not understanding that actually when you behave like that, there are victims lying on the battlefield, um, and also this energy of the Three of Swords, somebody wanting to wipe out and end uh, another's, I don't think it's life, I think it's more taking out their joy, their, um, you know, this, is, this card, the Five of Swords, says it all, is victory at all costs, I don't care if I hurt you, I don't care if I hurt you, I don't care if I... Um, destroy your reputation. I don't care if you hurt. I don't care if you're heartbroken. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And that's sort of the energy that's underneath and being directed to this 
um, future queen. And it's because whoever's doing this feels as though they've been poorly judged. We have the justice card. I've been poorly judged. And also I've been left out in the cold. I've been left out in the cold. Uh, this is the... Um, oh, actually, I was thinking that was a different card. Okay, sorry, that's not the five of pentacles. That's the uh, six of pentacles. That's the card of give and receive. Okay, I haven't been given as much as I think I should be. Okay, and it's about money. I haven't been given as much as I think I should be. So somebody has to pay for it. Um, I feel like a beggar at the banquet. This energy here, sorry, I know you can't necessarily see it on the card, but it looks a bit like, it reminds me of that figure in Red Riding Hood. You know, when Red Riding Hood goes through the forest and she meets the hunched woman, you know, who's who's got the wizened old face and she's looking down at the ground and she gives um, Red Riding Hood the apple. There's also a bit of Snow White coming in here as well, the energy of that. But it's all about sort of the good queen, trying to take down the good queen. Yeah, it's almost like the energy of Red Riding Hood and Snow White, because I'm also seeing Snow White's energy, who is the fairest of them all. Because ultimately, it's interesting, I've, the last video I did was Marilyn Monroe, and one of the things I said about her is, there's nothing about her not to like, really. She's just one of these people everybody likes. Uh, or certainly people don't dislike her, you know, really, really hate her. And I think that's true for Kate as well. She's just a nice person. She's, a, she's just a nice person. She's got on with the job. She's a hardworking Capricorn, despite being called work shy and lazy this week. Um, she's got on with it. And she will keep getting on with it. She's very much got the energy of someone like the former queen who will just keep going. Um, and, you know, that is a threat to others that don't feel as secure in themselves, basically. So um, just a little friendly reminder that this this he's here to try and keep this video as light as I possibly can, even though it's a heavy subject. OK, so there we are. Just bringing the gonks energy in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anything else to say? So, oh, one thing Diana was mentioning to me. Now, I don't think there's much that we can do about this one, but she kept showing me her ring, her engagement ring. Now, of course, William, rightly or wrongly, gave Kate Diana's engagement ring, that sapphire and diamond ring. Now, I know from experience that sometimes you can inherit a ring, but the energy of it is actually not beneficial for you. Uh, my mum and dad divorced when I was 18 and I know my mum has never worn the engagement ring since and it sat in a jewellery box and she's always said to me, I don't know what to do with this ring. When I die, I don't know what, what you should do with it, whether you should just get rid of it, sell it, because she sort of knows that if I was to put that ring on my finger, it's got all the energy, not just of a happy marriage up to the date of the betrayal, but it's about the betrayal. For my mum, that ring is about the betrayal, Okay without getting into all of their story. And also, do you remember I had a ring that looked very much like Princess Diana's ring? It was my grandmother's ring that my mum had given to me. And it disappeared, or stroke was stolen from my house. I'm not quite sure which, but it's the only thing that's ever disappeared from this house. It was one of my prized possessions. I did a little Instagram video about it, you know, a couple of years ago, crying on the beach because I'd lost this ring and still haven't told my mum that I've lost it. It's gone. But spirit then said to me that ring went because it wasn't you weren't meant to have it, and there was a story behind that ring, and you didn't realise what the story behind that ring was. And I'm not going to go into that because it's my business. But you weren't meant to wear the ring. It would have brought bad luck ultimately. And what I'm trying to say about that ring of Diana's, even though it's beautiful, I don't believe it's bringing Catherine luck. And how it's coming in as a negative influence at the moment is through this um, body image eating thing that's going on with her. So she's not going to get rid of that ring. Um, I mean, I could, if William and Kate were sitting in front of me, I would be saying, William, go and buy her a beautiful eternity ring. Buy her something that is just from you, that's from your heart, that's got nothing to do with your parents, that's got nothing to do with your past, that isn't, a, I mean, think about the crown jewels as well. All of the beautiful pieces of jewellery that they wear, they're all other people's jewels. You know, when Kate puts on the, the finery and the diamonds, it's all somebody else's. You know, it was the Queen's or the Queen 
Queen's mother or the great, all of this. It's not her jewellery. I would say to William, go and buy her a beautiful piece of jewellery that she can place on her finger that is just from you. And actually, what Diana's saying to me is she said, put that ring into a museum, okay? That's what I'm being shown. I'm being shown that ring. I went to the Tower of London this year and they've got all of the, the crowns from... I never knew there were so many crowns. I thought there was just one crown. There are loads of crowns that all the different kings and queens over the years have worn. They're all slightly different. They've all got different jewels within them. Diana's shown me that the, the, the ring should be somewhere like that, lit up in a cabinet. People can go and look at it, but it's a bit like you don't need to wear it. She's really wanting William to buy Catherine her own ring. Having said that, I don't believe that probably will happen. Um, but who knows? Let's put it out there as a potential timeline. It would be great. Great thing to do, William, if you ever watch this video. Um, and I'm also seeing the energy of Emerald for some reason as being very healing for Catherine because Emerald links into the energy of the heart. It's the uh, green energy, so it's healing. Um, I'm seeing Emerald would be very nice for her energy. Anyhow, yeah, that ring is not doing her any favours. So what could we as light workers do about it? Um, we could just send the ring healing. Is that possible? Yes, of course it is. You can send healing to anything. You can send healing to a person. You can send healing to a place. You can absolutely send healing to an object. So we could, you know, next time you see her... Um, Number one, send healing to her fingers because this whole thing with Russell syndrome is to do with um, the gag reflex. It's to do with making yourself sick, basically. The knuckles get uh, sore, which is why the plasters potentially might be there. Maybe it was just a trampoline accident. Maybe all the time she appears in public with plasters, it is just sporting injuries. Maybe, 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 but maybe not. But whatever's happening, whether it's a sporting injury or something else, um, see those hands being healed, see the hands being strong, see her whole physicality being strong, being healthy, being whole, being happy. And then do that for you if you also are suffering from anything like this or you know anybody that does. Can we all just take a moment, in fact, before I go on, just to do that. And the Archangel that I'm going to bring in for this, and this is going to be a collective healing moment, is is uh, Archangel Shamuel. Uh, maybe an interesting choice, but actually a perfect choice. Archangel Shamuel comes in on the pink ray. The pink ray is the energy of love. Okay, I've always said, as many people do, that love heals everything. Love heals everything. Also, when we have self-love for ourselves, then we are less likely to want to hurt ourselves, harm ourselves, um, get into destructive behaviours, thought forms, patterns. Um, and also, love is the strongest shield that we have against any form of psychic attack, um, any form of uh, negative energy thrown our way. Uh, we can also envisage, for example, Catherine covered in, uh, um, surrounded by the armour of God, surrounded by a mirror. So anything that's thrown at her is reflected back to sender for them to deal with. But the energy of love is very powerful. Love conquers all. So Archangel Shamuel, in, in my range of sprays, this spray is called Love and Peace, and it's called Relationship Support. And today I would like you just to think that this relationship support is also relationship support to yourself to yourself, to those wounded parts of you. So for me, it's that wounded part of my eight-year-old or seven-year-old that for whatever reason was stuffing toast up her arms and flushing it down the toilet. Why was I doing that? Um, can we bring love into that space? Can we bring compassion into that place? Can we bring healing into that place? Can we also bring acknowledgement into the place that here I am now, age 56, and I'm okay, you know? Um etc. Okay, so it's like seeing the past version of yourself, the present version of yourself, and the future version of yourself, all wrapped and swaddled in this beautiful pink ray of light, which comes in with Archangel Shamuel. So let's bring Shamuel in. And Diana's, Princess Diana is really giving a nod to the Archangel Shamuel energy. Um, and it's because uh, Princess Diana, I believe, ca um, not came from, but is 
incarnated or has a strong tie to the planet Venus. So we all have lifetimes on other planets, many of us. It's not that unusual. So Diana has what we call a Venusian, Venusian um, energy, star seed energy. Venus is the planet of love and relationships. Marilyn Monroe, the last person I channeled, also a Venusian lifetime, love and relationships. It's all about loving self. It's all about loving self. So let's just bring that beautiful pink ray in of Shamuel and surround that around yourself, around anybody that you know needs healing for the issues that we've discussed in this video. And just feel the strength of that love energy as it enters the body, it enters the cells, it enters the organs, <coughs> it enters the uh, mind, it grounds you, it surrounds you, it enlightens you, it supports you, it encourages you, it completes you. Really beautiful. Okay. So I think I'm pretty much nearly done, I think, with this video. Um, let's just pull a couple of final cards. Um, the fighting will continue around Kate, the Seven of Wands. But in this depiction, here she is, and she's rising above it. She's rising above the drama, the fray. Here she is in a garden. Um, I believe she likes her garden. She does like gardens, actually. I remember seeing something about her when she was doing something with gardening or something like that. Probably a love, actually, she shares with Prince Charles, actually, because he loves his gardens as well. So there's a thing about getting back to nature, getting her Wellington boots on and um, going out for a walk in nature with her kids, with her family. We've also got the card with the Four of Swords, which is saying she needs a break. She needs to rest. She needs sleep. She is uh, Ten of Wands. It's just a bit too much at the moment. Um, so my advice to her, and then we've got the sun coming out afterwards. I feel by summer months, it's going to be a little bit brighter around her. Um, we've got the sunflowers there. We've got children. I don't know whether she wants another child, actually. It's a potentiality as well. But her children also are a, a sense of great joy. She will... Um, ensure that she is well for her children. Um, I don't feel that this, whatever's going on with her at the moment, I don't feel as though it's going to continue forever. I feel in many ways it's coming up to a head now, which is why I'm talking about it. And then hopefully the bubble can be popped of illusion, secrecy. And from that, uh, the only path upward the only path is upward. But at the moment, yes, tired, 10 of wands, too much, go just too much going on. She's just carrying too much. You know, at the end of the day, whether you like them or not, William and Kate are carrying on their shoulders the future of the monarchy. Not Charles and Camilla. They are the, the stopgap, basically, um, at the moment. They're not going to be here forever. They're not going to be here for that long, really, maybe a couple of years. William and Kate are the future, and they know it. And that is a huge responsibility. It's a huge burden. And she's a human being, and sometimes she feels it. And she's okay. She's got this Capricornian grit. But when you're under relentless psychic attack and character assassination, it's going to hurt. And it's going to go for your weaker spot. And for her, I think she's on record of saying she was bullied at school and found it quite difficult. And I think she actually said she lost a lot of weight then when she was bullied at school. So, you know, it, it could just be that. But um, with the whole ancestral thing with Diana, because even though she's not Diana's child, she married Diana's child, the feels as though there is a pattern repeating within the relationship uh, linked into her diminishing size. And that just needs to be nipped in the bud. So she needs to receive the care and attention she needs. Let's just pull a card on that. Receiving the care and attention she needs. Show me the care and show me the energy that's around her in terms of receiving what she needs. 
the moon. She is receiving help, but it's hidden. Um, that's good. I'm glad to see that. Um, I also feel as though she's she's not a Cancerian, she's a Capricornian, but I don't know what her moon sign is in, but it feels as though one of her triggers is also the moon cycle, actually. Um, how old is she? She's about 40, so she's not menopausal or yet anything, but there's something going on with maybe just her cycle. Sorry to get so personal, but something like that that might also be triggering these episodic things that sometimes occur with her. Um, but it feels as though she is... Let me just get clarification on that moon, because I'm assuming that's hidden help. But let's just say... I mean, Diana is hidden help. Diana's saying, I'm here to help. Oh, I can't believe it. The Queen of Cups. Diana has got her back. I've also got the Ace of Swords. Um, yeah, Diana's got her back. Diana will see to it that she doesn't sink any further and that she gets the help that she needs. And I feel maybe she's already been doing this, but she's going to be nudging William strongly to like, look, look at your wife, make sure, look out for her. I mean, I'm sure he already is, because I'm sure he loves her, but um, Diana has her back. I love that. Okay, let's just pull a card on William in relation to all of this. What am I picking up with regard to William? It's almost like he can't see past the red mist at the moment. He's so angry um, at what they've done to her. Uh, again, high priestess. Uh, but we won't see that. Uh, we've also got the magician with him as well. Um, when I say he can't see past, the, he's got the six of cups. He, 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 William can see that there's a potential of history repeating itself here with regards to what they tried to do to my mother. They're now trying to do to Kate um, in a different way, different people doing it, but um, won't allow that, won't allow that. There's great strength that he's the, he's the magician. Uh, he's got access to um, the best doctors, the best, whatever she needs is available to her. So see her whole, healed, well, a bit plumper, you know? I mean, she looks beautiful with a little bit more weight on her and that sounds judgmental. I don't mean it to sound like that. It's just like a healthy weight is what I'm talking about. If you look back at the photographs of her when she's... Um, a little bit, uh, she's just got more of a rounded face. She just looks better. She's healthier. It's the truth of it. So um, she's still beautiful no matter what. And she needs to be reminded of that no matter what. She's beautiful, but she needs to know she's beautiful. Okay, one more card on William. William. Yeah, he's just like, he's so angry at his brother that, um, yeah, he sees her as the queen of pentacles. He's just, she's my queen. And... Um, judgment is going to come out for that for those that have tried to hurt my queen um i don't believe william has hurt his queen i believe that william adores her and i think that's very evident when you see them together because you see the attacks on their marriage that you know he's done this he likes this you know it's so again it's another form of this orchestrated psychic attack this time on him but he's more able to just shrug it off She's, although he is sensitive, he's a sensitive Cancerian, but um, she's less able to. Um, she's able to shrug off a lot, having said that, but this is just another level. This is just another level of attack. So the most important thing is to see her well. Now, I pulled one card for her last night from the Archangel Metatron deck. I wasn't sure if, it, if the deck was even going to work to answer the question because it is a self-mastery deck, but it was amazing. I got this card twice for Kate. And it's beautiful. It's the card of leadership. And it says, answer the call. And this shows, this is quite a lonely place to be. There's nobody else in that corridor. You know, there she is. She's having to hold the light. And remember, she holds the energy of the divine feminine template as well. Okay, the lunar energy of the lunar uh, eclipse, whatever it is near when she was born. Um, answer the call, dressed in purple and red. Um, with a bunch of keys and she's going to go up those stairs. Let's pull one more for her today from the Metatron deck and then I think I will close it out. 
Okay, that one just flipped out. I will take that one. Um, we've got fire, dragon strength. So we're also being reminded by Metatron that for the issues discussed here, that fire is a great purifier. So to bring in the fire energy of purification. Um, I do have, although I don't know if I've got it to hand, um, a fire spray. I'll just see if I can find it. That's the flame spray. I'm redoing my room, so everything's all over the place. Well, that's interesting. I've got three flame sprays, but no fire. Well, let's have those. <laughs> we call it the um, flame is flame, isn't it? So I'm, I'm using this one. This is also the attunement and connection spray to Metatron. So I feel as though he's also saying, and remember this is about you as well, if you're experiencing issues, um, connect to me, uh, connect to the Metatron energy, that orange ray, which is very empowering. Orange as a colour also is very good for absorbing shock. It just soaks up all of the shock and it acts like a shock absorber. Again, it's another... Um, layer of defense but also this is a dragon strength this is a dragon strength she is the princess of wales at the end of the day the dragon is the uh, symbol of wales so her and william have always got this dragon strength around them as well and i actually am now seeing their uh, premises where they live um and the car they, they go in, uh, wherever they go, it's almost like they've got this dragon energy that goes with them before before them. It goes before them and it's behind them. It's a bit like a bodyguard energy. It's like dragon bodyguard energies they've got around them. So she is protected, he is protected, um, but equally now bring that energy in for you as well. So use the dragons, use the color orange as a shock absorber. Um, orange is also very good for just healing any sacral wounds and often again if you think about eating eat, and eating and our relationship to eating and food um, it ties into the two lower chakras well the three the solar plexus the sacral and the base but I'm particularly being drawn to the sacral energy today um, and the um the wounding that can lie there but when we fill the sacral energy up with orange light uh we it helps us to feel well so i'm just going to spray the flame metatron flame orange energy beautiful okay i'm going to leave it there guys and uh, get this video up and uh, you take great care I'm going to sneeze Hold on. <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'm not going to ed edit that bit out um, take great care of yourselves I'll be back within 48 hours hopefully with the first advent uh, video also look out for the ancestral video that I've promised you and hopefully also a Marilyn Monroe channeling. But yeah, December's a busy month, isn't it? So let's all just try and also uh, look after ourselves. And I'm also, you know, physician heal thyself. I'm doing that as well. So that's what I'm planning to do. But equally, um, you know, I've also got things to do in my life this month. So that's the intention. Whether I get it all done or not, I don't know. But uh, I do hope you enjoy anything that I put up on this channel. And uh, please like and share this video if it's helped you or you think it might help somebody else. Um, send the po Keep the positive vibes going towards William and Kate and all involved. And uh, most importantly, to yourselves. Okay, only positive, uplifting comments are going to be uh, on this video. Uh, any hate or just bringing in an energy of lower stuff, um, we're not going to have. So this video is going to be very well protected. Thank you very much. Lots of love. Bye-bye for now. Bye.